Hey everybody, happy 2019, and we're back with another episode of the Musical Tour of the Spiral, where we take a look at some favorite tracks from Wizard 101. Not just my favorites, but your favorites too, so if you got a favorite you'd like to see uh, covered, leave it down in the comments and I'll try and get around to it soon. So this time is Celestia. Celestia was the first expansion world. The developers at King's Isle told me that there would be more content and more worlds coming but and i didn't necessarily believe them i was very happy to be wrong about that issue this was a neat exercise in you know oh i i sort of thought we were kind of done uh but as it turns out we weren't the music from the different areas of celestia was more varied than i think any of the other tracks that i had uh, written up until that point so there's a lot of uh very different sounding celestia tracks but i was trying to keep certain elements together and one of the instruments that's always been very evocative of water to me is uh, vibes, vibraphones, and other kind of mallet percussion. I thought had the right character for it. So that's that was a kind of a through line throughout the other areas of Celestia. This particular track uh, was called the Crab March, and what's the input they gave me was horns and male female choral elements. Think old Hollywood epic like Cleopatra, but can't be like a lower budget gladiator movie. Maybe a touch of the Mediterranean loot or piccolo somewhere to hint at ancient civilization crossed with a rundown pizza joint. Action elements punch the militaristic and marchiness. These characters are here to be comic relief, so feel free to play with this tune and think serious meets delusional. They have far out Italian accents ranging from fresh off the boat to New Jersey mobster. Maybe some Venetian mandolin meets slightly drunk trombone on the marchy themes. Modeled after the Roman Empire in the last days, a civilization crumbling, a facade of royalty and dominance, almost bumbling but not aware of it. So one of my crowning achievements was that I think I worked almost every one of those uh, influences into the, into the track, so I was very proud of that. So let's take a listen to the track, and then I will talk about what went into it. the loop so once again we've got another big track here uh, i've got some audio tracks in here which is me singing again which for some reason i'm i'm subjecting you to uh and that's sort of stacked on top of this uh, choir right here i've got some accordion and some mandolin to pull in some european influences you might notice that there's a lot of duplication over here i've got some you know violin violin new violin <laughs> other all these uh, different sounds. Over the holiday break, I did pick up some more sound libraries. And when I was updating the mix of this, uh, I did wind up using a lot of them. So anytime you see new, that's a newer instrument that's that's usually playing in conjunction with the old sound. Uh, right off the top, in the original trumpet, staccato trumpet's playing here. And in, in the mix, it's not too bad. Uh, it doesn't sound too bad, especially when you're layering it with the xylophone. That's a pretty good trick with mallet percussion uh, doubling a lead line, and it really sells the lead line. You're distracting from the fact that the you know maybe the attack on the wind instrument sound is is too repetitive, which it kind of is in this case. Here's the new trumpet. Uh, 
This is them together. New sounds definitely helping out the old ones there. Um, and here's with the xylophone on the at the beginning. Providing all the attack to that sound. We've got tubas. I love I love reading for tubas when I get to. So again, this is an older library. I have better uh, tubas now, but uh, and I did try replacing them here. Didn't really feel like the updated tuba gave me a whole lot of uh, benefit, so I took it out here. Then I have to remark about the castanets. So you know what crab march would be complete without uh, castanets? These are the uh, finger percussion that flamenco dancers uh, will play as they're dancing as a percussive uh, accompaniment to what what they're doing. I have the old castanets, and in reviewing them, I decided they were a little silly. Yeah, so even even for uh, a comedic tune, they were a little silly. So I layered them with some new castanets. All right, and then also have the bassoon, and same story, older sound. So yeah, it's okay but the new sound definitely pops harder. Mm, that old bassoon is kind of clicky too. Then we got a contra bassoon. This is a, a super big bassoon that plays super, super duper low. And for comedic stuff, I mean, that's a funny sound. Uh, and then this is the new Contra Bassoon. Which is still super low and super full of character, but it's it's not quite so it's not quite so slap happy. <laughs> it's a it's a little more contained uh in its in its silliness. Uh and then also layered some bass clarinet in there too, uh just for a little bit more. Got a new uh some new oboe sounds. Uh, and that that replaced some of the older sound. Also, uh, a new piccolo. These are these are both from Cinewinds from Cine Samples. All right. So breaking down this section here, you can actually see the the chords up here. Uh, uh, sometimes I will use this part of, of the Pro Tools interface to actually remind myself, you know, when I come back to this years later, like I'm doing now, you know, what I was playing there because there's no, uh, you know, there's no chord symbols or notation here to help me remember, you know, what I was doing in a section. So here is the string part, playing this little pizzicato arpeggiation section over top of the oboe, uh, kind of outlining the melody there, just descending. So in that section, I wanted a little bit more, and I wanted the, I knew I wanted the harp to come back in, uh, but the harp's actually playing on the off beats as well as the on beats. And you can barely hear that top note, but it is definitely adding something. And then with the mandolin. I, I like that, really like that section. It's just a nice ghostly, kind of creepy part there to offset some of the, the overly comic marchy sections. And of course, uh, my trademark uh, amateur vocal stylings. This is to complement the, um, well, compliment bite me strong word. This is the choir. <laughs> So it, it's really blocky. It's really keyboardy, you know, uh, uh, not a lot of um, smoothness to it. So these tracks were conceived as a way to try and help smooth that part out. Uh, 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 
hearing it now, if I actually had to do this again, there's some parts where I, some of these uh, tracks stop the sound and some of them just kind of sing all the way through and I'd try and probably try and make that a little more consistent. But it's it's definitely adding some life to the, the otherwise kind of lifeless choir sound here. Accordion's another instrument that just really quickly sets a tone. Uh, and with the mandolin. So all those instruments really um, doing some fun stuff there together. Uh, there's this big kind of virtuosic violin section here. And this part was a little bit problematic just because samples are good at a lot of things, but usually uh, really quick violin parts and making it sound nice and smooth and you know connecting the notes where they need to be connected and separating them where they need to be separated that's what live players do really well it's what they train for years to do so the fact that the tune is meant to be a little comedic uh gave me a little permission for some artistic license here <laughs> Now, you'll notice that the end of that phrasing was blocked off, and that's because this sound didn't really have that double stop sound that I was looking for. So that's the, what this track, it, it, that's the only reason this second uh, pink track exists here. And that's a new violin. That is my Ellie Scoring Strings uh, violin first chair. Sounded really good on the quick attack there. Uh, and then get into this last part. This last part's uh, pretty tricky. Uh, this is actually uh, a part where you can see that I actually slowed the tempo way down for that, for that little violin solo there. And then we come back in slightly faster, but still slower than the original tune was. And then the bones come in on what's kind of a tricky part. And this is part of the Cinebrass, Cinesample Cinebrass Library. So you notice that the sustain pedal is actually down when the long notes are being played. And when the, the staccato notes are played, the sustain pedal is off again. Uh, and that's a switch between uh, long legato notes and short staccato notes uh, in this particular sample library and a lot of other libraries now it's kind of becoming more of a standard they used to use key switches where you you know you play a key that's kind of out of the range on the keyboard but out of the range of the instrument to switch from short notes to long notes that, and different kind of playing techniques but now it's a little more intuitive just to use the sustain pedal because you know keyboard players tend to when you want a long note you hold down the sustain pedal to, to get that to achieve that kind of longer note and then you let it up to play shorter, more percussive stuff. The lower the velocity, the, the kind of harder the bite and the, the shorter that staccato note is. So that's all the new, uh, my newer Cine Samples library. I had the older sound. I left the older sound in this section where they're just playing the chords. So a little cheesy on that, but if we double it up. And bassoons are in there too. Uh, this is a little bit of a cheat because uh, you normally have maybe a couple bassoons uh, in a group. You usually don't have three, but I just did that to kind of thicken it up and making it sound even more epic at the end. So here, you know, we've just done this flourishy violin, you know, pretty section with the strings and the harps playing here. And then it goes right into this something low that's kind of sort of trying to be pretty as well, but it's just, it seems like a 12,000 ton elephant in a tutu. <laughs> That's pretty much the bumbling part of uh, their input taken care of in one section. Uh, and then of course the castanets come come in for the last little bit. Just 
Bring it up. Turn it up to 11. And the xylophone's in there too, again, kind of outlining uh, the, the melody here. A lot of contrast here between the high-pitched instruments and the low-pitched instruments. Everybody's really getting uh, a chance to play here. This choir part here. So it's really just, you know, one chord and then the chord gets extended. You know, voices are added to that chord on top. Another chord and then extended more voices added on top. It didn't really have the, I really wanted a punch on that second one. It's really like, do, sha, do, sha, you know, so just building the chord up like that. But the choir voice itself didn't do that. That's what I designed these voice tracks to do. Really punching that second note. And kind of selling that second part of the chord as sort of a new note. And there's probably gongs and splashes and timpani here. A lot of fun. I, I love singing. I make fun of it, but I, I really do enjoy getting the opportunity to sing here and, and layer these notes up on top of each other. Because when this took me a half an hour, 45 minutes, and at the end of it, you look back and you're like, I had no idea what this, this was going to sound like just a half an hour ago. And now, you know, there's something that feels really tangible and complete. So thanks. Subscribe. Leave a like. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see me do next. Got another one in the can. It's all ready to go. It's actually going to be dropping pretty soon. And hopefully I'll see you then. Thanks. Bye-bye.